I've tried countless times to put into words the adventures we go on and the situations we get into, and I just can't seem to do it. So we're going to show you. We're an international auction company specializing in all things vintage power, antique tractors, vintage cars and trucks, motorcycles, signs and memorabilia. We're not just auctioneers, we're collectors with a passion for every item we sell. But it's not just about the items, it's also about the people. We get to experience, share, and tell the history of our past. Every day is different in the auction industry. You just never know what's coming next. This time, we travel to North Carolina and pick up some historical pieces at the Gathering of the Green. Plus, a little rain. Today, the team is in North Carolina, working on the Daryl Barrier Collection. It includes over 100 pedal tractors, farm toys, nicely restored classic tractors, low production garden tractors, and all kinds of vintage signs. Today, the team is split in two. Shannon, Rick, and Jason are working on toys, while Doug and Alex work on the signs. You want to start with that Benzol? Right. You go ahead and make those out. So you're just gonna create a spreadsheet, do descriptions and Yeah, yeah, that way we've got dimensions on everything, conditions. We need to have figured out while we're here touching and feeling it for the people that can't. 30, 31 inches wide, 51 and a half tall. The inserts uh, 16 and a half, 17 inches. Now why do you use your cell phone? Uh, well, you know, we usually started out where we were using big, big cameras doing this, but actually some of these take a lot better photos without a lot of monkeying around with settings, so and they're really honestly hard to beat with how good they're getting now. Without the base, he's 58 and a half inches tall, 29 inches wide. Seventy-two inches long, fifty-two inches tall. Fifty-eight inches tall. 32 and a half wide. That was hard at work on his lawnmower. Move off this chair. I'm just gonna swap it out. It'd be all right. You could put a. You could make a desk that went right over the top of this. You know. Well, it's, it'd be kind of like a. Uh, you know, you just you just drive around the office. <laughs> if you need to go outside, go outside. You need to mow grass. Do that. I'm telling you, I mean, this is, I mean, I think we're on to something here. It's double-sided. That looks like overspray. It is. It is. I, yeah, 22 and a half tall, 58 and a half wide, 42 tall, 59 wide, single-sided, 11 inches tall, 21 and a half wide. 38 inches tall, 60 inches wide. 42 inches tall, 50 inches wide. It's 35 and a half inches tall, 63 inches. 22 and a half inches tall. Oh, we switched it up again, I see. Yeah, you know. I figure for this time of year, wow, and this has a deluxe uh, buddy seat. Look at that. Bring your lady friend along with you when you're mowing, <laughs> yeah. pushing well, snow. That way he can have company in his office. That's right, that's right. 46 and a half inches tall, 44 and a half inches wide. This Phillips sign has got their, has got their original hangers, but they're folded around to the back side of it. Meanwhile, in the toy room. This one. Okay. And the 
signed by Joseph Ertl. Dyersville, Iowa, made in USA. But no other markings on it. Rick. Starts good, runs good. Case Neon, International Neon, International. Blue Ribbon, International, International. Almost every tractor company produced some kind of branded clock. They were used in dealerships or as promotional items. These clocks were produced in limited quantities, making them highly sought after by collectors and can bring thousands of dollars. International Harvester is known for their farm equipment, but for years they built refrigerators and freezers. The company released their first line in 1947 with production ending in 1955 when International sold to the Whirlpool Corporation. This refrigerator sign is hard to find in such nice condition. This sign is made from brittle plastic that easily cracks. Okay, let's start at like 50. Okay. On, on this and go okay. all the way up to, yeah. Up to the 74. Up, up to 74. 40 and a half. 51. Number 53 is the Gulf Farm Tire Service Center. 33 inches tall, 42 inches wide, 17 and a half tall, G-38, 29 and a half wide. Twenty-eight inches round, four foot wide, seventeen and a half tall, G-72. Uh, yeah. Good year tire sign, porcelain. 30 and a half inches tall. Walker and Company. 35 inches round. The sound of the air compressor signals it's time to move on. The sun is out and the temperature is rising, so the signs have to wait while they catalog the tractors. Coming up. The Gathering of the Green is the place to connect with John Deere enthusiasts from all over the United States while showcasing and selling John Deere items. The event also gives the Almond team time to visit with collectors and for them to bring items they want to consign. These little ones here that were like a magazine, they're out of the 30s, so I don't know how strict you are with your pre-30 type stuff, but they're, they're cool. I mean, yeah, cool. right. And these are the good ones. These are good ones. And I don't know if there's much yes. of this. I got these. I bought a guy out of a bunch of stuff, and I've had him for a number of years. And yeah, that's, that's a uh, that's a case. Uh, I mean, the best the best humor. early best, yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of falling apart there a little bit. But it's aging. This is a Yuba ball Yuba ball thread. Yeah, that's a good good piece, especially the color. Look at the color on yeah. that. Yeah. You know what, I've talked to guys that have the tractor and none of them, are, that's colorized, I assume, yeah. are painted that color. Oh, yeah. that's really, cool. Were they really, gray? They were kind of a green, some were green, some were gray, and yeah. nobody really knew what colors they were supposed to be. Hmm. So, that's and, cool. Very cool. Yeah, and then this one is... Track layer. This is that's best. Super cool. Best, best, best stuff. You know, you get into that. That's, that's a great piece, too. Yeah, there's the date stamped in there, 1918. Yeah, that's a, that's early. Early stuff, See, you know, and they got all that. Wow, that's yeah. great stuff. Look how crisp all those pictures yeah, are. That's, yeah. The corners aren't all messed up. Yeah, this is actually in really good shape. In the yes, back right here, it has some of the growers that have them listed them here in my hometown. Where's the guy here? Um, Durham, California. There's a guy, Yoakum, and there's some streets, roads, or, or Yoakum. Mm -hmm. I named after him. 
And there's a one in Chico here too that's right north of this bigger, bigger city. Wokely? Yeah, that's super cool. Wokely, yeah, yeah. Wokely, Chico, California. Huh. You know, it's just like, it's a great it was neat. And you know, I started looking through them and I've had them for many years. I man, we actually keep these a while. But no, let's send them to somebody that really, I don't, I do John Deere. And right, so that's, right. It's like, like I say, I bought a bunch of stuff. I'm a collector out of Washington State. I bought a Caterpillar John Deere Neon yep. and a bunch of stuff from him. And he was just wanting to get out. And I got, you know, a good deal. I paid up for everything, but I got a good deal at the time. So put them in the free 30 sale, boys, and we'll see how they do. All right. If that works for you. Yeah. If you don't do want that. them and you think they're trash, I'll throw them all your own. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. We're good. Right here. Right here. This is great. Yeah. Can you talk about, like, the connection of what Caterpillar had to John Deere? Or? Right. A lot of the tillage work on the farms out was done with caterpillars and the cultivating and planting work were done with real tractors. Yeah. And so it was a good fit for the two of them. So the dealerships were together in the late 40s, 50s, and early 60s. Yeah. yeah. And so then they Correct. went their separate ways. And that's why, you know, like those, that caterpillar neon, I can remember as a kid yeah. in the dealership in Woodland, California, going in there and there's caterpillar neon. I got a chance to buy one from this with a bunch of other porcelain signs and this stuff and a bunch of other stuff. And I just, Take it all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great, great stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about the tillage with the killer for yeah. uh, yep. part of John Deere yep. being on the West Coast yeah. with that connection with the That's why those polar. John Deere yeah. tractors back there are out there aren't so worn out because they never did any heavy tillage. You just cultivate and pull in a planter. That was a, mm -hmm. easy, easy work. Those have got good photos in them. I mean, it's kind of, there's three issues there that I wound up with. And, and they just kind of need, but there's three, it's, I see in the yeah, background, I'm sure there's these pictures. pictures. Somebody will want them. Yeah, I just had that and I thought, eh, it's something I, you know, throw it in there if you want. E.H. Crowfoot. This came, the guy dealer. got it from his dad or grandfather and stuff at a dealership up in, uh, up in western Washington. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, we got him. You got it. He's in the system. Okay. He's in the system, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, we're going to take care of it. Yeah, I see you on, uh, you know where you guys are. Oh, you too. Yeah. Yes, God. Bakers. That was <laughs> a mess to begin with. Uh, we got it organized. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take care. Okay, thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Back at the auction center, some completely different items are being dropped off for the pre-30 auction. It's raining, but Shannon and Josh need to unload a couple of crawler tractors. Another lovely day with almonds. What's the stuff for? 330, 2022. This tractor is a Caterpillar 2-ton, which started out as the Holt 2-ton and was later renamed after the merger of Best and Holt in 1922. It was first introduced in 1924, with production ending in 1928. How long have you been doing this? Oh, I've just been a farm girl. I've never asked that question. <laughs> I've been here almost three years. It's powered by a four-cylinder, 251 cubic inch engine, rated at 18 horsepower on the drawbar and 25 horsepower on the belt. This one needs some work, but still is a restorable tractor. The other model is a Caterpillar D2, the smallest diesel tractor built by the company. It was introduced in 1938, with production ending in 1957. It's powered by a four-cylinder, 221 cubic inch engine, rated at 26 horsepower on the drawbar and 32 horsepower on the belt. On a cold January day, Brian Hull sat down with Kevin Boss to discuss the hobby, their mutual interest in John Deere machines, 
and Kevin's upcoming auction. So let's talk about the combine collection. I know you got pull type combines, you got corn pickers, you've got um, uh, the 300 Husker I know is coming up on the auction. You also got the self-propelled combines right up to the 105 hydro diesel um, with all the bells and whistles, the quick attach front end or front header. Um, you know, that's, that's something pretty astounding. Uh, yeah, and I started out <clears throat> with the uh, the corn pickers, you know, basically my goal was to have one of every model that deer made, and I did. Now, believe it or not, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, well, what's that amount to, six or seven? And I said, no, it's 18. You know, there was 18 18 models. different John Deere corn pickers. Corn picker models. Models. Wow. And so I did have all of them, and I'm still keeping, you know, the rare more unusual stuff mm -hmm. you know people have to realize that the auction isn't my collection you know right. the auction is the stuff that I can do without or I can replace okay. uh, you know the <clears throat> the idea of the auction was to uh, I'm, I'm trying to amass monies for other endeavors other projects yes. exactly exactly uh, but i want to go back to those 18 different model combines that you, or uh, corn pickers that you had those weren't just corn pickers to sit all those corn pickers were field operational they were all field operational but one and i'm still working on trying to find an elevator to make it operational i have one of them that is not operational but otherwise yes they so they were fully they were all functional and they and they have been used i have they have all been in the field at one time or another wow. I know that's that's pretty amazing within itself. A lot of people get yeah. them all dressed up and... Uh, a lot of that, Brian, is kind of that same way, you know, once you've completed the goal, you know. Next. <laughs> exactly, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm kind of that way, you mm -hmm. know. I, I, I see a goal that I want to meet, uh, you meet it, and then I'm, I'm, I'm dissatisfied, you know, I, I'm, I've, that, that satisfactory thing for that goal has been met and I'm ready to move on to move something. Move on to another one. Well, that was kind of the same way with that, uh, the portable corn crib. Yes. I, I remember that when you, when I first come out here one time and, and you said, I think I'm going to do this. And I just looked at you go, you're going to do what? You're going to make a portable corn picker or a corn crib. This I got to see. So tell me how that all come about. Uh, you know, it started with the fact that I had learned that deer, John Deere, which at that time I was collecting deer only, uh, I had learned that John Deere was making, that had made inside cupped elevators for corn cribs. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that they, you know, that, that was another part of farming, that if you go to an old farm and you see a crib with an inside elevator, that was the ritzier farmers at the time that could, have, that mm -hmm. could afford those things. And I always thought that would make a really good display at a show, and I knew that not a lot of people knew that Deere even made an inside cupped elevator. So we had to come up with a way to display <clears throat> that elevator and that's what it turned into was a whole crib. Now, the, the original design was the elevator, but when you, when you start a project like that, sometimes you get ventured off and it's a necessity more than, I, I didn't really want all the optional things that I put on the crib, but it was a necessity to make it operational, okay. which again, I was, I was into the, I want this thing to lift a wagon. I want that wagon lift to be able to support and pick up a wagon load of corn. I want to be able to move the corn. I want to be able to shell the corn, grind it. Mm -hmm. I want all these features to work. So <clears throat> you start with those things and you kind of have an open mind for engineering is what I call that, open-minded engineering. So don't get stuck on a rut because you know you may just have to drop the whole project. Uh, so we moved things around and made it work uh, and while you're doing that, you got to keep in mind, how am I going to move it? Mm -hmm. So, you know, half the battle was making it uh, usable so that you could, this thing was portable enough to take the shows and set up and tear down. Now, it's not a quick set up or tear down, right. but it's not terrible either. Because you said it takes, what, two to four hours to be on the crew You can you set with you? up uh, with a couple guys that have done it before. You can set the whole thing up in about four, four and a half hours. But okay. a lot of the smalls take more time than the, the, the seven or eight large pieces. You know, the seven or eight large pieces in an hour and a half or two hours, you can have it pretty well ready to go. Because not only, like you said, is the bucket elevator, you have the wagon lift, you have the, the sheller mm -hmm. for the ear corn, and then from the sheller, it goes to the grinder. All those take power sources. I know you got jack shafts, you got power shafts, and that's all powered with? 
the, the, the wagon uh, lift and the inside cupped elevator right now, I've got it running with a, uh, I use a one and a half horse hit and, uh, hit and miss engine. But it could be used with an old open armature electric motor. Okay, um, yeah, that was always a possibility back in the day. The jack shaft that I'm using right now is actually for an electric motor. Okay. And that's why it turns the speed it does. Because for one thing, I didn't want it to turn at full rate because your demonstration doesn't last very long. Right, you're not in production. No, I'm not so. trying to unload a wagon in three minutes. So I'm trying to make it last longer. So with the jack shafting I used and the speed of the hit and miss motor versus the speed of an electric motor slowed me down to about a third of the actual speed. Got it. So that powers the elevator and the wagon lift. Now, it, like I said, originally it could have been electric. It could have had a line shaft run outside. I've mm -hmm. seen people do that with a uh, speed jack yep. and a tractor. Uh, the hammer mill grinder I've got set with a door in the end of the crib and a flat belt. Uh, and that came from a neighboring corn crib. When I was a kid, I did chores for a neighbor and we ground ear corn once a week for the cattle. And he had an old Super M and you opened the door in the crib and you rolled the belt out. <coughs> the <coughs> burr mill was mounted in the crib and you once a week ground ear corn in the crib. So that, that's kind of where that feature came from that I've got the door and you roll the belt out. Okay. You know, it was something I had seen. Wow, wow, unbelievable. And this is all transportable. It loads onto a gooseneck trailer. I know right now you have it stored on a running gear. Yeah, I've so. got it. Uh, what it fits in is it fits in an eight foot wide and 16 foot long area. So that leaves you trailer room for a loader or the, you know, if you want to take a sheller or other tractors with, there's room to put other things on your trailer. Wow, that whole display breaks down to something that small. Yes. That is kind of neat. And sometimes at a show, that's half the, uh, show between setting it up and tearing it down i've had people that have sat and watched and come over and said that that was uh more interesting than the crib itself it's definitely a choreographed uh event because i've seen you set it up several times at several shows and i know you have a pretty dedicated crew that tends yes. to go with you and they just know exactly what the next step is um, I know you take your little compact utility yep. tractor. I've got a little compact uh, utility tractor and, and the pieces all also had to be modeled to fit the lift capacities of that tractor. Exactly. So we had some things we had to change later on through the uh, course of it to, to make it so the tractor would load and unload the whole, yeah, the whole crib it by itself. Because not every show you go to has the ability to no. lift some of that stuff. And I didn't know if I wanted to trust other people's loaders to, you know, because I was a little safety conscious of the thing. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff is built in the feet under the, you know, there's a whole footing underneath the uh, elevator that helps it stand up. It's not is, you know, if you walk by and look at it, you think it looks a little wobbly, but it's actually quite stable. It's quite stable, actually. On the next Old Iron Adventures, we travel to the 2022 Gathering of the Green in Davenport, Iowa, and take you on the farm toy adventure of a lifetime. <laughs>